And for somebody who is turning to caffeine in that time, or it is a chronic thing through, through society as a whole right now, using that, you mentioned it before, using that as a drug to push through when we're tired, talk about the physiology. What is that doing to the body? Yeah, and great. why is that not a good thing just to block that signal? Yeah. So what's happening with caffeine? We talked about that sleep pressure. Well, part of the sleep pressure that builds up the longer we've been awake is a substance in the brain called adenosine. And, and in fact, if you give adenosine, you know, it can put, put animals to sleep. Um, we, we can monitor adenosine and it tracks sleep pressure very effectively. It's not the only element of sleep pressure. But what does caffeine do? Well, it blocks adenosine receptors within the brain. So it masks the fact of how tired you are. So, you know, you do really feel more awake because you've blocked the effect of adenosine on the brain. The problem is when the caffeine is metabolized, then you can feel overwhelmingly tired and then just fall asleep uncontrollably. The other problem, of course, is if you're relying on caffeine to keep you awake during the day, as many people do, then it takes a while for the caffeine to go away and unblock those adenosine receptors which means that you get desperate. You think, oh my goodness, I've got to get some sleep. What am I going to do? I'll just have a whiskey or two, just to, you know, and of course, or take a sleeping tablet. And these are sedatives. They're not biological replacements for sleep. Alcohol is particularly effective at uh, interfering with memory consolidation and the processing of information uh, whilst we're asleep. So don't fall into this stimulant sedative loop that many of us have done during our lives and many people still do just to get through try and break it it's brutal it's difficult but it's not a healthy way of, of sustaining um, uh, behavior when you talk about alcohol there on the other end of the spectrum using that to calm down and not being a good thing which i totally agree with it brings up for me what might be a good thing? We talked about melatonin in the beginning and how that's overhyped, but are there any other supplements, natural things that science is behind that people could use either on a regular basis or for when they need to make up for a lack of sleep? Uh, the short answer is sadly not. The best cognitive enhancer we have is sleep. Um, and again, it's all about realizing that and defending our sleep and prioritizing it and not feeling guilty about it. So frustrating, you know, sleep is for wimps. Ah, you know, and of course it's not. Essentially, it defines so many of our, our, our important attributes and we've got to take it seriously. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. So the shorthand for melatonin that you read all the time is that it's a sleep hormone and it most emphatically is not. But what does caffeine do? Well, it blocks adenosine receptors within the brain. So it masks the